Hello folks, welcome to Unicorn Light Tarot. Today we are seeking out messages from our family members, from our ancestors. And this could be ancestors from all the way back, this could be um, immediate ancestors, people who have passed on. Today the veil is very thin because it actually is, I'm filming this on Halloween the 31st or Samhain as we say at home. But this is a timeless reading. It really doesn't matter when you listen to this reading. These messages will be perfect for you at the time that you find them. So yeah, we are definitely going to speak to our ancestors today. And if there's any healing that needs to be done throughout the ancestral line or the bloodline, we're going to work with that today too. So if you've been seeking some extra personal advice, from your actual bloodline and you found us here today, I really hope that these messages resonate with you. So we have three piles today, number one, number two, and number three. The first pile has tiger's eye and the second pile has what I call bird of freedom. And the third pile has an amethyst. So go ahead and take a deep breath and we're just going to ground into our energy just for a minute and we're going to invite in our spirit guides and our ancestors for excellent insight and only insight that will move us further into our lives surrounded by light and beauty. So we're looking for high frequency messages and insights to integrate into our lives to become a completely whole and beautiful person. So if you need some extra time, please go ahead and do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. Feel free to pause the video and just figure out which pile is for you. I'm also going to pin the timestamps down below as usual so you can go straight to your own pile and find out your messages from your ancestors as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to ground into the energy. And we are going to go ahead with pile one. So for now, I'm going to put pile two and pile three aside. So pile one, if this is your pile and you have the tiger's eye, these messages are for you. And as a reminder, we're looking for high frequency and beautiful messages that resonate from our ancestors throughout our bloodline for any guidance. We're asking for any guidance that will help us become the actual and whole person that we are supposed to be in this lifetime. So I have a couple of different decks here. For tarot, we have, I'm also using the unicorn deck, which I'm gonna use as a, an extra deck on the side if we need. So I am using the Halloween tarot today. So we have the Knight of Pumpkins. I'm gonna put them up here so you can see them. Seven of Pumpkins, right there. And the Queen of Ghosts. Then we have Three of Scrolls, setting your course. And then these beautiful moon oracle cards, darkness and gratitude. And I'm also going to pull, let's put these up here. One of these cards here, the unicorn cards. Right here, this one's for you. See the divine in everyone, divine sight. So the first message I'm getting is that a lot of you are from a very strong matriarchal line. And those are the ancestors coming through. So matriarchal and also a feminine energy coming in. And that doesn't necessarily mean gender, but... I am feeling a matriarchal line, certainly. I feel like, and I suppose in some ways it's it's no surprise, I feel like the matriarchal line 
within your ancestors have been extremely strong and and have held the family together and they had their own power in their own way and I feel like the power that you have in this lifetime in this generation is slightly different to theirs and yet you are the word I'm getting which is kind of strange hearkening on the back of their efforts so they see who you are and and the power that you have to take their divinity to the next level. So I feel like I keep getting the dark night of the soul. Um, if any of you are familiar with that saying, it's people who are, and this is very loose really, because everybody feels it differently, but the dark side, the dark side of the moon or the darkness before the dawn. It's when you're on a spiritual journey and things get really, really tough before you go through and you break through onto the other side. I know, I think that's a door song and I keep having it in my head. But I feel like you have called on your ancestors before or your ancestors have been there in order for you to have your strength in this lifetime. And I do feel as though for some of you, you have you have felt very alone at times and you felt as though you were the one that were carrying the burden and you may have physically have done that in your household growing up you may have actually seen or experienced things in your family and and certain aspects of family life that you've integrated into your soul where others were in a position or seemingly in a position to not acknowledge it or or go on or ignore it whereas you saw it and took in the pain and there is a certain amount of darkness that comes with that and what 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 I'm hearing is that that darkness turns into or transforms into knowledge so you're you're all alchemists pile oneers you're all alchemists I believe to some degree I like to think that everyone has the power of alchemy but some people really do know how to transform in a way that's that's truly beautiful, that's truly magic. And you do have that in your fingertips. And that does come from your bloodline. You actually may have come from alchemists and there's different ways of seeing alchemists. A lot of people see it as like turning lead into gold, which is obviously very literal. And I know back in the, the medieval ages, people actually tried to do that. But transforming negativity or darkness into light and being able to do that means that you're not afraid to go into the darkness. So I don't feel as though you were necessarily afraid to go into the darkness, but I feel in some ways you were plunged into it. And, you know, some people willingly walk into the darkness without knowing what they're getting into. But I feel like in some ways there was an aspect of you that was willing. But I think really at the end of the day, you were plunged into it. And again, this is family line. Um, this is family. This is hereditary this is pain that has been passed down through your family line now i i don't want to to harp on that because i feel like you have come into and were born into a brand new generation where you are no longer concentrating on that pain and no longer do you need to because you are able with your own magic to transform that pain and when you transform that pain and you sort of, you push back the veil, what was behind that pain was a vast amount of power in your matriarchal line, which was absolutely beautiful. And again, really, really powerful women who knew who they were and maybe put up with, you know, pardon my French, more crap than they, they had to because of the time that they were living in, but they had immense power and whatever they did, they did really, really well. They held the family together. And if they were herbalists, they were amazing at what they did. If they were midwives, they were amazing at what they did. They probably were known for what they did. And you carry that lineage with you. So I feel like in the beginning of your lifetime or the beginning, I should say, of your spiritual journey, it was about shedding the darkness or the pain or the, the misunderstanding or misinterpretation of your family bloodline. But I feel like you definitely are moving out of that with their help. And 
And it's no coincidence, I feel like you got the tiger's eye, which is first chakra, root chakra, cleaning out, regrounding again on your own terms. But you've been doing this with the help of your family line and setting your course. I feel like your brand new beginning is really interesting because you can take all of the power from your family line now and actually integrate that into your life to have pure freedom. And the one thing that you're able to do, and you will be able to do in this lifetime, if you're not fully quite there yet, hold on because it's happening. Divine sight. See the divine in everyone. I feel like in the past, you may have had a sort of like, a, a, what is it? P.S. What is it? Uh, past life trauma. Um you may have had like that kind of integration, that kind of reaction to certain types of people. And that's because certain types of people were there to remind you of what needed to be transcended again through your family line in order for you to manifest your own destiny, if this makes any sense. So in many ways, you would have avoided certain places or certain types of people um, because you felt like their energy may have been overwhelming for you. But actually, they were just reminders of, they were sort of markers and reminders of what has been. But you have transcended that. So you are actually moving into a beautiful time here. I just really want to put that there. Um, a beautiful time where you've transcended your past with the help of your ancestors and their message is to you is that you are setting your own course now and that you are protected and you will always be protected by them but they don't need to be around you as they were before and I feel like like I said you either asked for their help or there were certain aspects of self uh, within certain parts of your life that they were absolutely there for you because it was really, really important because you were going through these dark times, but you are now transforming in this really beautiful way. And I feel like this is your future up here. We have the seven and the night. So your version of self has changed. Who you believed you were has changed. I feel like you may have felt before that you were a product of your family and now you are moving and integrating that beauty of your family but now moving on on in your own terms and again setting your own course so you are holding you are able to come out on the other side and holding the wisdom of your family and again great great power so for any of you that are healing the divine feminine within again this has got nothing to do with the gender or the matriarchal line specifically bloodline but really physically healing the divine feminine, there would have been something very close to your heart that would have happened very, very recently. I would say even within the last six weeks where you, you've really come into yourself and you've been able to release some of the burden from your divine feminine. And that was your family helping you, your ancestors helping you. So you are absolutely coming into yourself in your own way, on your own terms and charting your own course for the first time. So some of this may have been karmic stuff that was going on and karmic family stuff that perhaps wasn't quite you. It would have been karmic family stuff, bloodline, but you have transformed this as a true alchemist. And I do feel as though for some of you, and this is a general reading, so if it's resonating, then you will understand you are just about to get into the point where you are very grateful for your family lineage and you will be able to have this rest stop, which is where you're at now. So this transform transformation can really take form in this really beautiful way. And when it truly takes form here, you will actually carry the light of your ancestors, move forward and teach others how to do that too. So this is all happening for a reason and it's really, really, it's it's a gorgeous reason reason and the reasoning behind it is that in order the message that that I the final message that I'm getting for you Paul Wonners is that the the sort of paradox is that for you to begin 
your life as a solo person, as a solo entity, you had to understand the voice of many. And that's how you will become your true self. And they are still here for you. But like I said, they don't need to be quite here as they were before. So that's already an indication that before they were protecting and they were holding and they were supporting. And now they're guiding, which is a very different energy. And you've earned that energy because now you can take a deep breath and move into whoever it is that you are about to become. So that is truly beautiful. Um, I'm going to do one last thing before we leave. Um, you've already transcended because you're alchemist. You've already transcended and you're at that point, like I said, of this new platform of breathing out and breathing in the new. But I do want, I'm going to do Choku Ray here. I'm going to do a little bit of Reiki. And we're also going to send long distance Reiki. I doing I, when I set up the session, I always do the long distance um, symbol right at the beginning of the session. So it's open to long distance sending. And we're just going to send Seihei Ki here back to your ancestral line. I want to do the power symbol one last time. And I'm also going to do the Karuna Reiki right here for you, hearth. And we're going to send that heartfelt beauty, that energy right back into your bloodline and let it settle there. So you should feel that. Take a deep breath and feel that going all the way back to your bloodline. So pile one, you are ready for your new beginning, which includes your past in a new way. So that's very exciting. So thank you for joining me, pile one. If any of that resonated, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Again, this is a timeless reading, but the veil is thin today and we are filming this on Halloween, so which is why we have this stuff out here. So I want to say thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. And we are going to take one more deep breath. Okay. All right, pile two. Pile two, this is you move this aside here. So this is your bird of freedom. So again, we are asking for relevant messages and guidance specifically from our bloodline and our ancestors, any kind of insights that we can get, keeping it in love and light, high frequency, anything that we can use, any messages that we can use that can resonate with our life literally at this moment. So we have, I am using the Halloween deck today. So our tarot cards here, three of imps, ace of imps, nine of ghosts reversed. Okay, so I'm gonna put these up here. These are your tarot. We have these beautiful moon cards too here, the void and growth and then we have oh angel gabriel and you have a couple of threes here do you not have yes you have a three here and you have a three here so the first message that i'm getting for you pile two is as above so below no exactly what that means yet but we're, we are opening up our session here with pile two with as above so below i'm also going to pull the unicorn card here too as a little extra guidance. What do we have? Invisibility, take off your cloak of invisibility and let your light be seen. So there's a few things going on. We have um, immense sadness that's, that's coming up with the void, invisibility. Um, I feel as though some of you have come from some, let's see, so you can see this. I do want you to see Angel Gabriel here. Some of you have come from real darkness and it was tangible darkness. And you have the three here. Now, the first message I'm getting is that you were always protected. And I feel as though for some of you, 
you really did put yourself into some situations growing up that really could have ended quite worse. And you may have seen a lot of people go through darkness too. I'm seeing some kind of addiction. Um, and I feel like for some of you, if this resonates, there are some of you out there for pile two who are wondering um, and are grateful that they're still here, but wondering how. I feel as though you've had no problems in your life in some ways. You, you've almost not been afraid of the void or the darkness and you've willingly put yourself there. I feel as though that you do have a guardian angel and I feel as though now that you've somewhat lessened that darkness or learned to deal with the void and I and I and I mean deal with it I don't I I feel as though the way that you went into the void is that you had to learn excuse me how to be comfortable within it I don't feel like your version of transcending was very personal to you but you so I don't want to, it would be inaccurate for me to say that you came out on the other side of the void you just learned to work with the void and you transformed it from the inside out rather than going in there transforming and then moving out of it. Um, some of you might still feel as though you're in the void a little bit. I feel as though there was great sadness in pile two as I was turning it over. That's lessened now because I feel as though, and you have the, the three here and the three here, I feel as though some of you have really connected or really understand that you do have a guardian angel. And maybe that's because... Some of you, like I said, cannot believe that you're still here. So you have to have some guidance. Some of you have asked for infinite proof that you are being protected. And in many ways, you have received it. The way in which that you've received it could have been very intense, but you have received it and you've believed it. I do believe as though you're open to the notion of angels. Some of you might even work with them, but I feel like there is an unworthiness uh, for some of you. And you again, you may have transformed this understanding slightly of unworthiness, but you came from a legacy of unworthiness or feeling unworthy, not actual unworthiness. And I don't think it's a coincidence at all that you got the bird of freedom. That really goes right here with your growth card. I do feel as though you have grown out of sort of a pit of fire, like some of you, like hell in some ways, your version of it. Um, you've always done things on your own terms. I feel your will is very strong. Um, and I feel as though you've always done things the hard way. Sometimes you've gone out of your way to do things the hard way. And that can be an interesting way of living your life. In some ways, you're not afraid of the darkness or in some ways, you're so used to the idea of a void that none of it really puts you off. You're almost numb, I think, to the to the idea of greatness. However, and I and I will say however here, um, your ancestor or sh ancestors, excuse me, are showing me this. This is an essence of where you come from, but... You are absolutely going in a completely different direction. And again, the direction that you've taken and the way in which you, you, you trod on your path is very unique. And that comes from the fact that you come from a unique line. You know, the first thing I saw, which was really interesting, I got this um, outlaws. Like you come from like outlaws and, you know, I actually live in Santa Fe, but you know, I'm I'm not from this country, so I, I don't really have any connection necessarily to any land that I go to unless I'm picking up on other people who have um, a connection to the land. But the first thing I saw was a connection even to the Southwest to like out, literally outlaws like Billy the Kid, you know, way back in, in, in that time, like gunslinging, that sort of thing. Very, very clearly growing up in a lawless land and doing things kind of on your own way, in your own way. And you really have that in, in your heart of hearts. I feel like you may have turned that around and maybe turned that against yourself, but you are definitely not one for law. You are making your own law. You are doing your own thing. And I'm smiling as I'm saying this because your ancestors are very, I, I feel like if you go back to your ancestral line, you could even find some outlaws, um, which is really quite strange. I just literally picked up on that. And I feel like 
that energy and that and the way in which they did things sort of was from the darkness in a way. Um, but that was the time. I think you definitely had that understanding of self. And now what you're doing, and I think you, that's why you poured, poured yourself into the void and did things on your own terms. You were almost sort of recreating those old times, almost in this lifetime. I'm putting yourself into these sort of, in some ways, for some of you, again, general reading, but into these crazy situations and somehow coming out of it. I did feel some addictions at the beginning. I don't know if it's gambling or alcohol or whatever it is. And again, it's um, it's something that you would have done to numb um, because you, you didn't know how to to be seen on your own terms. And I think that the understanding of the outlaws too, what I'm getting from your ancestors is that they really did run things in their own way. And I think that understanding um, was very familiar to you, but very foreign for the world. So you wouldn't have known how to really integrate properly. And the way in which you would do it some way is to appear invisible in certain situations so you could get a handle on it and come out on top, if that makes any sense. Um, you were free to do things your own way if you were invisible. Your whole thing now... You have the nine of ghosts. This is, you know, the wish card reversed. Um, doing things on your own terms and understanding that the darkness, I feel like you you made a home in the darkness, maybe a little too long. And now you're definitely coming out of it or seeing the light. And again, you're doing things on your own terms. You have the growth card here and you're you're taking this energy from your ancestors who are very strong um and yeah no i'm i'm getting this very very fierce kind of like even saloon kind of like shoot up like movie stuff which is the only thing that i would know it from but real outlaw energy and be able to embrace it in a way that allows you, I would say, would be a better word, to exist on your own terms. So you've gone within the void, you're not afraid of the darkness, and you put yourself in certain situations that have almost tested the world. So it's kind of beautiful in that way because the, the, your ancestors have been there and they have been showing you that they're there, but you've done it in such an extreme way. It's kind of crazy. Now what they're saying is you can take the energy that you have, which is really profound, a little bit dark, but really powerful, and turn that into whatever it is that you want now. And that's what you're doing. You're taking the three and you're balancing out in a way that's absolutely yours to move forward in on your own terms. And we have the ace here. So they are holding you, your ancestors are holding you, but they're also watching from afar and they're, they're there for guidance, but they also understand. And I think some of, some of your ancestors may have had a little bit of a hold on you in a way that, in a way that, not that it was inappropriate, but in a way that wasn't exactly fair in some ways, if we're being honest, not exactly fair. I feel like there might have been some karmic debt that came in from your bloodline, but you you are being released from that and they're seeing that. Um, they're seeing that and, and allowing you to go in your guided way. So they're now appearing in your life in a very different way. But, you know, I, I don't want to leave you with the idea that they were bad people. They weren't bad people. They were very powerful people who did things on their own terms. But I feel like, they lived and died in their own way, and that energy is in you. But you you live in a completely different realm, in a completely different generation. So taking that energy and moving it forward on your own terms may have caused you a little bit more of the darkness than you needed to, to be surrounded by. But, but you have gotten their strength, which is really incredible. So I feel like for you, your new beginnings have definitely already um, started. And I feel like you're at the point where you can integrate a lot of the, the, you have such a strong will, integrate that will and not use it against yourself, if that makes any sense. I feel like you've used your will sometimes against yourself, which is, which is, um, 
powerful and and sad at the same time. Sad in a way that it's made you sad. And I feel like there's certain cycle of events that you've gone through time and time and time again. And you've gone through it with the with the void still with you. I feel like, and again, you're not transforming the void. You're learning how to work with the void in your own manner by being in the middle of it. And that's what you're doing. And you are successfully doing that. So you are taking all of your family's traits and learning how to work with them on your own terms. Brand new beginning. So I'm going to pick one more card for you. This is a really beautiful symbol for you. And even your matcha, I am free. Your mantra, sorry. Green tea, matcha tea. That too. That would be very good for you. Antioxidants. But your mantra... I am free. I am free. That would be a really good one for you to keep repeating until it goes into your subconscious. So I feel like you are being released. Manifestation. Focus on the vision beyond yourself and unicorn will help you. Yeah, I feel like you are free. Free from the past to move on in your own direction, on your own terms. And you are being guided by new, new guides now, which are angels too, but also your bloodline is working with you very differently now. And you're able to take all of that will and goodness and that lawlessness and turn it and, and transform it on your own terms into something very powerful. So your manifestation time has come. You will definitely make it happen because you have the ace here. There's nothing that you can't do. There's literally nothing you can't do. I mean, you've got the will of a sailor. For some reason, the sailor came up too. So you're used to traveling and different modes of, of going in and out of darkness. So that is you. I feel like you are onto a brand new start, but in a very, very unique way and on your own terms. And I feel like it's not that you've outgrown your ancestors, but you're moving on to your own version of spirituality and your own spirit guides. You're kind of leaving everything behind and doing things on your own term. Fly free. Remember, I am free. I'm going to leave that there. That's for you. I also want to do the power symbol here for you, Choku Ray. And then we're going to do for balancing light and dark, say Hickey to balancing light and dark, masculine and feminine. You have a very strong, masculine, willful side, especially from your ancestors. So we're just going to balance that out. And I do want to do the hearth symbol here just to put that energy around the energy of the void that you may have put yourself in at some point. So we're sending that energy to you. Ground into that energy. Please take a deep breath. That was kind of an intense reading. I hope it resonated for you. I wish you all the beauty in the world. Please feel free to seek out your angel, especially Gabriel. He came up for you. Remember your mantra. I am free. Deep breath. Believe in who you are. Brand new beginnings on your own terms. You're really going to do things completely differently to everybody else. You've always done that. It's a beautiful way. So if any of that resonated with you, pile two, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. I want to thank you for visiting with me today. And I want to tell you to take care and look after yourself. Okay. So I'm actually going to leave that. Okay, pile three. Here we go. Pile three. This is yours. You have the amethyst here. The stone, I'm going to put that there. So again, for a reminder for pile three, if this is you, we are looking for love and light and guidance, some kind of clarity from your ancestors, your bloodline, anything that will resonate with you today. The veil is thin, so we're looking for some really powerful messages, again, that will resonate with you at this very moment. This is a timeless reading, even though I'm, I'm actually doing this reading when the veil is very thin on Halloween, the actual day of Samhain. So here we have 
the nine of imps. We have your tarot cards first. Page of pumpkins. Three of bats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to these up here for you. Nine of imps. I'm going to put the three of bats up there. I feel as though I've got the page of pumpkins. We also have nourishment and protection from our moon oracle here. And then we have Raphael. So we have the eight and the nine working here. And I'm also going to get you, we have our Reiki wand here. I'm also going to pick for you a unicorn clarity card here. Pile three. What have we got for the unicorn card? Okay, mystery. Explore the unknown. The unexpected awaits for you. So the first energy that I'm getting and the first message that I'm getting is that um, you guys are very, very careful and practical beings. And I feel as though you've seen your journey, your life journey, uh, whether you see it spiritually or however you see your life's journey, as stepping stones, moving slowly and steadily up. I feel like very practical, sort of earthy. If you're not grounded, then I feel like you're very earthy folk. I feel like some of you um, may have even looked into different forms or modes of healing. And I think that comes definitely from your ancestors. I think a lot of them I'm getting from the land. Now that could mean several different things. I mean, certainly farmers, but you know, herbalists, like living closely with the land. So it would be people who tilled the land, people who worked with nature and understood the cycles of nature in a really, really profound way. They, um, that energy is absolutely within you. I do feel as though, even though that energy is in your bloodline very, very, very strongly, it runs like a river. Uh, the first thing I'm seeing is a river, sort of a river of blood. So it's your bloodline knowing um, where you've come from but I think that you may have been separated from that, maybe not physically, but spiritually. So, um, I mean, the example that I have is, is that if you have native blood, you were you were physically removed from it in some way, and spiritually removed from the the nature and the, and the and the beauty of it. But that's that's in some ways reductive. That's just an example. But I am feeling as though your family came from great power. They drew their power from nature specifically. They knew how to work in tandem with nature. And you inherently can do this. You were born with this. And I, in many ways, you are aware of this. You are definitely aware of it. Um, you are aware of the energy around you. I feel in some ways, you have not immersed yourself into the energy necessarily as much as you could or if you did it's it's not quite there's aspects of it from your ancestral line but you've had to fill in the blanks and make it your own story if that makes any sense so the essence of it you've been able to take and integrate into your life and the 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 beauty of it the actual energy of your ancestors and and how they they were with the land i feel like a lot of them um i i keep getting that this understanding of the hierarchy of nature and how it works with animals and you know when you hunt you you take the the um the slower animals and and you do you there's there was this hierarchy of nature and how you lived how your ancestors lived and that is very firmly in your bloodline and I keep seeing a river and I keep seeing blood so there has been a, a segregation from that but there's great power in that and you've been aware of that power and you've been aware of that protection but like I said you've had to fill in the blanks yourself and had to work with that energy sort of in your own way it's almost like you were born into 
a completely different time, obviously, but with only some of the stories, if that makes any sense, or the energy of the, the power of the stories haven't diminished necessarily, but you you are interpreting them differently with your modern mind. I'm trying to make this as clear as possible. Um, with these messages from your ancestors before, I, I definitely got sort of um, like physical messages. With your ancestors, I, I, I'm getting more visual, like definitely the blood, the river, um, hunting, hierarchy, um, how you nourish yourself. I love these two cards here, the protection and the nourishment. I feel like there may be a sense for some of you that you were, you were sort of left behind and wanting to, to really pull in the energy of your ancestors. And even though you did feel protected by them and some of some of some of the time in great need you may have felt them around you but yet there there's so much power you felt as though maybe you weren't a part of that power if that makes any sense at times and I feel as though the mystery and I, there would have been great mystery I feel around your ancestors, they were very powerful people and there were stories told around them, about them. And I feel like for you, it would have been more of a story and wanting to feel that yourself. I'm also feeling that there's a lot of betrayal in your bloodline. There's... um pain but in a very specific way there's grief in your bloodline I can definitely feel grief in your bloodline and I, I feel as though you would have known that you would have felt that there's no way that grief does not get passed down there's definitely grief on all sides of your bloodline but particularly the matriarchal bloodline which may have been persecuted um, I feel like you may you may have ancestors that were persecuted for their magic or the way in which they used it, they were misunderstood and they were very, very powerful. And that bloodline is obviously still with you, but in a very specific way, insofar as there is there is pain in the bloodline and there's there's anguish, the screaming in the bloodline. I feel like I keep getting like on a hill. If you go to a certain hill, you can still hear the screams, that sort of thing. Now, I don't want to freak you out or anything. Actually, we, we're really, they're showing me this to show you the power that you come from and the history that you come from, even though there was initially, there was betrayal, returning to the earth preserves their power. So it was never really, it was taken, but nothing can be really taken from you. That is your message in this lifetime. So the first thing that we're going to do here is because of your groundedness and your your willingness to move forward, but quite slowly, I feel like you're the sort of person that really um, wants to take their time in a way. Um, and and that's you sort of you're sort of you have a sort of quiet intellect. There might be two sides to you, a very gregarious side and a side that seemingly takes chances. But you have sort of an external side that you show to the world. And there's another side that really um, takes its time. Again, very earthy, maybe not always grounded. But you know, when you know how to ground yourself, you you know that you might even be an earth sign or a Taurus. You know that things take a while. You take one step in front of the other, and that's the way that you've done it. In certain times, you have been connected to the earth, but I feel like you almost are so earthy that sometimes you fall out of the understanding that, that life is full of mystery and beauty. Um, and even though you're absolutely open to the understanding that life is full of mystery and beauty, your practical sense of mind keeps you in the practical sense of mind. So you forget that it's there. Um, I would disagree with this card a little bit insofar as it says explore the unknown. I don't believe that mystery is unknown to you. I just feel like you you feel like there's a time and a place to explore it and you've never really given yourself the time and place to explore it fully. 
and really engage and sort of let go into the mystery. But all that is shifting. You now have, um, you can feel the protection around you in such a way. And, and I feel like you, you've always attracted a lot of people around you that have taken your energy too. And you've had to learn self-love and self-appreciation, definitely self-appreciation. And again, that comes from a bloodline of, of people who had great power, but their, their power was cut short. So there was this understanding, I feel like, that in order to show your power, you, you had to be there for other people in a way that was sort of exploitive, if that makes sense. So you, you didn't learn boundaries in the way that was healthy for you when you were younger, but you've learned them now yourself. And now you are ready to say goodbye. I feel like there's been an influx of people that have come in and out and they just were very quite disagreeable in some ways. And you now know how to self-nourish. You now self-nourish. You, you now know how to say boundaries. Please, please leave me alone. And even as you've said it to certain people, you may have felt as though this was sort of a wrong thing to say. But that's because I feel like in the past, because of what your ancestors went through, there was this understanding that great power needed to be met with um, with, um, how do I say this? Great power could not just display itself as great power. It, it had to be taken, taken down in a way. It had to be balanced out in a way. So for you to take great power and show that in this world, you were almost afraid to do that because not your life could be taken, but something could happen to you. So I feel like now that you're learning that great power can be shown and you don't have to put up with people around you that, that don't mean you necessarily harm, but are just not on your level. You don't have to compromise. I feel like that's what happened. Great power was met with compromise in the past and you've lived that out in several different situations and you now can show your great power, allow yourself to really delve into the great mystery of your past, who you are, and, and learn yourself, relearn yourself on your own terms without having to compromise yourself of the people that are around you. Um, sort of a new platform for yourself of, I feel like you're just about to come into your soul family, which is really beautiful. I feel like you've had a lot of people around you um, who were karmically tied and there were lots of lessons to learn, but it's so nice to actually come in to your soul family. If you haven't started meeting them, you will start meeting them very soon. And a lot of them are actually ancestors. They're going to hold that sort of like, I keep getting like peace pipe. They're going to hold that, that light uh, and shine it bright for you. And you're going to recognize them immediately. And I feel like they will, will hold you up in ways you're very, very creative. You're going to be able to, and you probably already started integrating this into your life, but there's very specific things that you understand about your past and you're very proud of it. You're going to be able to integrate and maybe you already have with art to educate others like you. I feel like the word I'm getting is disabled. You've so, some, you somehow felt disabled or disconnected from your heritage and it was taken. But you're going to be able to make sure that others don't feel that way anymore. This is a very powerful reading. Um, Raphael, we're going to leave him up there for you. And also, I want you to know with the, the eight, the, what I'm getting here is infinity here on its side. So the eight here, we're going to do this with the, with the Reiki wand too. Like everything moves in cycles, but we never really die. We just return. So that's the understanding that you're coming into. You are returning both to yourself, to your soul, and to the power of your family and your bloodline. So let's just go ahead and do this. I want to do the Choku Ray to the power symbol. We're also going to do Seiheki also for balancing not only light and dark, but 
emotionality too. And we're going to send that right back into all of your bloodline also too. Really powerful, beautiful people, very wise, not huge talkers necessarily, I would say, but when they did speak, you listened, that sort of family. And I keep being told that the infinity sign is really important. Some of you may even have it as a tattoo or may be thinking of it as a tattoo. And that's another way for your soul family too. They will be very much with the sign, the infinity sign, whether they bear it on their skin or they, they understand it or they know about it or they've integrated it somehow into their psyche. But your soul family will love that sign. That's another reason why you will know and be able to recognize them. And I'm also going to do the hearth symbol here, the Karuna Reiki for some beautiful, high energy, heart healing connectedness. So we're just gonna send this energy back to your bloodline. We're also gonna send this energy back into your childhood um, and to the beginning of your life to ground yourself into that, your beautiful little soul and breathe into that brand new energy that is you. Your legacy is profound and beautiful straight from nature, fierce warriors, 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 lots of protection and lots of knowledge being integrated back into your soul. And again, working for the next generation. That's a wonderful reading, Pile 3. I want to thank you for joining me today. If any of that resonated, I know it was a kind of an intense reading, but if any of that resonated, please do let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you for being here on this wonderful day. Samhain. Again, this is a timeless reading, but still, I'm going to put these here. A timeless reading. I want to thank you all for being here on this very powerful day. Love and light to all of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And until we meet again, bye-bye.